What's up guys and welcome back to How to Rip. My name is Kale Brock, I'm a surfer and a filmmaker. And uh, hey, 100,000 subscribers, that's amazing. Thank you guys so much. I just got back from hosting a big surf retreat for a bunch of uh, regular clients down south. And it was amazing. It was such a good experience to get that saturation that a lot of surfers miss out on through other commitments to family, to um, jobs, to work, and all that other stuff that just keeps us out the water. To just throw all that away for a weekend and have everybody just focus on surfing, it was such a pleasure. And it was, it was a really good weekend. And I wanted to share with you some of the takeaways that some of my clients had. So I wanted to um, use a goofy foot example uh, for this one. And this is really about maximizing and holding on to cutbacks to get that exclamation mark that you guys are after. A lot of people send me footage and from a technique standpoint, it's not actually that bad, it's actually pretty good. But their, their awareness of how they actually look on the wave as opposed to how they feel, um, there's quite a big, uh, contrast between the two. So take this surfer here, who's um, quite a good surfer, got some really good fundamentals in place from a technique standpoint. But if you look at this particular turn, what we see is that it sort of loses its emphaticness, it loses that exclamation mark. It's being held back into the intermediate category uh, instead of the advanced category, purely by a lack of awareness as to where the turn might be better off uh, to finish. So in this instance, the surfer cuts the turn short. And by that, I mean that the surfer probably had a potential rotational arc of, you know, at least 270 degrees, but instead went for that, you know, 120, 130 degree arc instead. Now, this is an issue on fat waves like this section here because the further we surf away from the white water, the less power we're gonna have. There's a rule, I think Martin Dunn used to say this, when fat, cut back. Um, and it's a super lame, <laughs> cheesy saying, but I think it really works. Um, if you remember in your head, the fatter the wave, the closer you wanna be to the white water surfing, um, to the white water, then all of a sudden I think your instincts are gonna kick in. So with this turn here, we saw the surfer looking really good from a technique standpoint. I like where the surfer drives off that bottom turn and gives himself a nice projection into what I think ideally would have been a roundhouse cutback. Now, instead of actually performing the roundhouse, the surfer just performs a regular cutback. Now this is an issue because when they finish the turn, they finish it in a low power part of the wave. And as soon as that's the case, the rest of your wave is screwed, right? We talk about flow being a key sort of um, indicator of, of good surfing. If you cut a turn short and you lose speed, generally you're gonna lose flow. Now the main difference you can see is the eye line. The eye line for the surfer over here um, on the left has already shifted back down the wave halfway through the turn. Now this might be normal in some other circumstances on a fast wave, which I'll show you in a second, but on a wave like this where it's slow and fat and you actually wanna be right next to the white water, this is what I would prefer. The surfer here over on the right, that's me, um, holding that line, looking back to the white water the whole way in order to actually rebound off of it. And that's a pretty basic look at what separates an intermediate turn from a more advanced turn. I wanted to take this further and have a look at Kelly Slater. Kelly came up, this is actually from a clip I released on my own channel. Um, Kelly came up and stayed uh, in my town for, for quite a while and I managed to find him once. No, I didn't go searching for him. <laughs> Hey Kelly. <laughs> um, but I just managed to bump into him once and, and got this footage of him surfing. Now this cutback was super good and it all starts with the eye line, right? I wanna, wanna really dissect why his cutback looks so much better than my own as well. Um, and how that other surface cutback could actually become better too. So you look at it, it's a beautiful wrapping cutback and there's some key differences there. So, so we sort of pull that back and it starts very early. A roundhouse cutback is unique because you actually approach it a lot more horizontally. 
um, and, and further away from the white water to give you time to go back. You know, if you're trying to turn like this on the right, um, it's going to be a very different approach uh, to, to Kelly's turn. Now, if I'm doing a turn like this, I want to actually project out in front of the white water there in order to do that roundhouse. Now, in order to do that well and give myself enough time, I need to have a lot of speed. And I think this is really where we see the key differences between Kelly and myself. Because he's going so fast, you can see that throughout the turn, he's well off center on his board, far more than I am. And as a result, he, that extension throws a lot of force through into his feet, into the surfboard, which then displaces a lot of water. Um, and a lot more water than myself. And overall, it just looks a lot more, I think, aesthetically pleasing. It's a lot more critical because the surfer, I guess, is in a more a dangerous position, I guess. Um, it's, it's more likely he's going <clears> to... <throat> there's more risk involved in what he's doing as, as opposed to what I'm doing. Now, if you wanted to pull that back all the way to the start, that would actually be to do with speed. But it also um, has to do with the, the leading arm, which I've spoken to you guys about a lot before. If we have a look at Kelly particularly, and it's sort of similar in my own example, we watched his leading arm pull all the way back um, on itself to be actually rotated uh, towards the white water. If we remember, we go back to that fundamental rule that where you look and where you point is where you go on the wave. This is enabling him to hold that turn and just drive all the way through it and get that rotation in the lower body. It actually originates in the upper body. So I think that, um, you know, comparing the two, uh, what separates them most, I think, is speed. Now, if we come back to this original cutback and have a look at the surfer and sort of compare them both in real time, um, we see that overall, uh, Kelly's going the fastest, myself, um, I'm probably going the second fastest, and then the intermediate surfer from my retreat is going the slowest into the turn. So where would you actually start to correct and rectify and then optimize that turn? You could start by looking at the eye line and, and talk about, you know, pointing back all the way to the white water and being aware of that stuff. But often what I find is that people need to sp start with speed generation. And even before that, they need to start with positioning and entry into the wave. Because if you enter it in, in the right position, you're actually going to go a lot faster. You're going to go fast. Um, so don't underestimate the importance of speed flow. This doesn't mean that you have to be really busy on a wave. This is something that I've had to work on a lot with my own surfing to try and not be too busy, um, to try and just let the wave do the work for me, um, particularly when it's bigger, and, and be a lot more reserved with my speed flow so that all my energy or my momentum is, is forward as opposed to being you know held up in little chippy choppy um, turns. So the takeaway I hope from today is to give yourself enough speed. I think that's the, the key thing. And that comes down to positioning, which is very hard to teach, and um, your pop-up and entry into the wave. And then with your actual turns, remember always the eyes and the, the leading hand lead the way. When it's fat, cut back. When it's steep, go more vertical. Those are some pretty good rules to apply. If you want to surf like Kelly Slater, I don't know. I don't know if I can help you. I've been I've been trying for a long time and it's it's I'm still not close. Anyway, guys, I hope this video helped you. Thanks again for helping us reach 100,000 subscribers. It's super cool to see um, the, a, a channel do that. It, it's it's awesome. Um, don't forget, guys, you can join me on Instagram at Kales Broccoli and also here on YouTube at Kales Broccoli. My other channel now has 50,000 subscribers. Super pumped. It's only, I don't know, it's been like six months or something. So, I mean, that's incredible as well. You guys are awesome. It, it's so, so cool. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys are frothing, getting some waves, looking after yourself.